surface area and lateral, lateral surface area of 3D shapes is our topic and objective for today. Essential question, how can you find the surface area and lateral surface area of three-dimensional shapes? So the total number of square units on the entire outside surface of a three-dimensional object is called its surface area. Okay, so surface area would be like if I took this, um, I guess, cylinder, and I found the area of its this circular part and the top and the base, and I added all those areas together. That would be the surface area, okay? Lateral surface area is the area of only the sides of the 3D shape. So you're not going to include the shape's base or the top when you're calculating the lateral surface area. Okay, so lateral surface area with this example is just going to be the area of the side. So if it's sitting like this, it's just going to be the area of all the way around here. Do not include the top and don't include the base. Lateral surface area is just the sides, okay? A geometry net, and sometimes I'll just call it a net, but it's not like a fishing net. A net in geometry is how a 3D object looks if all of its parts were laid out flat. And they can help you uh, find its surf uh, shape surface area. So here's some examples right here. So when you got a cube, that's what it looks like, you know, um, drawn out. But its net would look like this. See how it's all flattened out and like taken apart? Okay, cylinder, that's what it would look like right there. Rectangular prism, and there's its net. Square pyramid, triangular prism. Your summary asks, how many faces does a cube have? So on the next couple of pages, since you've already been um, versed in finding area of two-dimensional shapes, we're going to be practicing how to find the area of 3D shapes, you know, the surface area. And that's what you're going to be doing for these next couple of, I don't know, a couple pages. And if you find any mistakes in my mathematics or something like that, please let me know so um, I don't confuse many more people, all right? Okay. So the directions say for each 3D shape, circle its net, then find its surface area. So right here you have a rectangular prism. This right here would not be its net. That would not be its net. Because if I folded this up, that would be a triangular prism. This right here would be a square pyramid. So that right there is its net. Okay? And um, we can do these first couple of problems together, but I do want you to pause the video so you can actually work out these problems and actually see if I made any mistakes, okay? So to find its surface area, I'm going to be looking at this, like that surface right there, and that's a rectangle, so I would go length times width to find that, so in this case it would be 8 times 5, and I'll label it at the end, okay, I don't, I don't want to label exactly right now. Now that bottom one, the base, is length times width also, so it's 8 times 4, and this side right here is um, also length times width, so it's going to be 5 times 4. Okay. And this would equal 40, 32, and 20. But now I'm going to go ahead and use the net so I account for all of the um, faces of this rectangular prism. So let's see, this one corresponds to the one that I think is 40, 32, this part is 20, 40, and 32, okay? So when I add all of those together, I'm going to end up with 184 inches squared as the surface area, unless I messed up, okay? Okay, right here, we have a, it looks like it's a square pyramid, and that's its net. Okay, so for the base... I know it's going to be length times width, so it would be 4 times 4, which is 16. Um, for this, 
face right there. It's a triangle, so it's going to be 1 half base times height. So 1 half base times the height of it. So that would equal 12. Okay, so now I'm going to fill in on the net so I account for all of the sides because we're finding surface area, not lateral surface area. So I can go 4 times 12 to get 48 plus that 16 and I get 64 centimeters squared. Okay, that's a cube. So that's its net. Okay, so I know on a cube all the faces are going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to go 7 times 7, which is 49. So I can go 49 times 6. And that would give me, I think, 294 feet squared. Okay, number four, I do have a typo. I didn't give you enough information for a part. The height of the triangle is four centimeters. The base is six centimeters. But this, like, this slant height right there, this part, is five centimeters, okay? I forgot to give you that. All right, so let's go ahead and its net would be this one. Let's go ahead and find the area of that triangle. 1 half base times height, so it would be 1 half times 6 times 4. And that's see, half of 6 is 3, 3 times 4 is 12. And now I'm going to find probably that base. It's just length times width, so 12 times 6. And then this side right there, it's going to be length times width because it's a rectangle. 12 times 5, and that gives me 60. 12 times 6 was 72. Okay, now I'm going to find the net, and that's going to help me make sure I account for all the sides, the areas of all the sides. Okay, and when I add those together, unless I have, like, unless I typed it in wrong, or did it wrong, I got 216 centimeters squared. Alright, cylinder is a little bit weird. Just because, well, that, there's its net right there. Oops. And let's go ahead and start with finding the area of that circle. On the top, it's pi times radius squared. So it's pi times, the diameter is 10, so the radius is 5. we got to square that 5. So it's going to be 25 pi, which is approximately 78.54. Okay? But now that, you know, the side, the side of it, like the... Um, actually a rectangle you'll see right here so I'm gonna actually use this to calculate it and I guess I can draw the arrow for the side right there and it's a length times width you know so the length of it right here is actually the circumference of the circle so that length is going to be 2 pi r and then the width right here is just 15 okay so let's go ahead and substitute the values in 2 times pi, the radius was 5, times 15. Okay, so I can go 2 times 5 is 10, and then 10 times 15 is 150 pi. So let me go ahead and calculate that out real quick. Okay, I, I used the um, pi button on my calculator, and I ended up getting approximately, because I had to round, 471.24. Okay, so that's 471.24. This is 78.54, 78.54. Calculate this out. Okay, look, look, times two, plus 471.24. Okay. I got the same answer. So my answer is 628.32 meters squared. The summary says, how do you label when you find the surface area of an object? All right, it says find the surface area and lateral surface area of each 3D shape. Drawing a net could help you, or can help you. So this whole column on the left is gonna be um, but finding the use your use that space to find the surface area, and then on the right is lateral surface area. Remember, lateral surface area is just finding the area of the sides. Don't include the base or the top. Okay. 
So I'm gonna draw kind of a, a weird net. I'm not gonna connect all the pieces to it, all the um, faces. I'm just gonna just draw them like separately. So I know that there's gonna be a triangle. There's gonna be two triangles. And I'm not, this is not drawn to scale, okay? Obviously. And there's gonna be a rectangle and a rectangle and a rectangle. Whoa. Okay, so for the triangle, I'm gonna go ahead and label it. Oh, there is something I forgot to give you. This slant height right here and this one over here is 7.62. So this right there. Okay, and you'll need that for the rectangles. All right, anyway. So from here to here, it's seven. And then the base is six. Height is seven, base is six. So this area right here is, let's see, 21. Okay, length times width. This one's gonna be a 10 by 7.62. Okay, so that was gonna be this side right there. And this side over here is 10 by 7.62. Okay, so the area of that is gonna be 76.2. And I should pr probably put rectangles around it so I know exactly what to add up at the end. Okay, now this one's going to be actually the base, so it's a ten, uh, 10 by 6, and that's 60. Okay, and if I added everything up correctly, I should get 254.4 feet squared. Okay, that's for the surface area. Now, lateral surface area of this triangular prism You just take the area of this side, this side, and this side, okay? So I already have, I've done all the work over here, and I know that I just exclude the base, the base and the top. So I don't need to add the two 21. So I'm just gonna add 76.2 plus 76.2 plus 60, and I should get, should I show my work? Yeah. That way, if I made a mistake, you can identify where I made a mistake. So to get this one, I had added 21 plus 21 plus 76.2 plus 76.2 plus 60 to get that. Okay, right here, this is a, what's that called? A rectangular prism. Okay, and to find its surface area, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw like a, a net that's not connected. So I know there's uh, two squares composing the base and the top, and there's going to be four rectangles. Okay, so right here, here, this is five, so this is five, four by five, and that's going to give me 20. Okay, let's see, this rectangle can be right here. And that's going to be, that's 4 by 12. And there's one on the other side. And then this guy right here is a 5 by 12. And so it would be the one on the other side of it. Okay, so that would be 48. 48. 60. 60. Okay, so for the total surface area, you know, the surface area, 20 plus 20 plus 60 plus 60 plus 48 plus 48. And I, if I added it right when I first did my key, that should be it. Remember, call me out if I make a mistake because it's totally, totally possible. All right, so now for the lateral surface area, you do all the sides. Do not include the 20s. Don't include those base in the top. So it just would be 48. You can go 48 times two. There's two of them plus two times 60. Do that first, and then do that, and you would get 216 centimeters squared. Okay, this right here is a square pyramid. I know it's a square bottom because it's an eight by eight. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and draw its kind of net. So I know there's a square bottom, which is an eight by eight. That would equal 64 is it as its area. I know there's one, two, three, four triangles. Okay, the height of the triangle, each of them is 10. 
base is 8, all of them are the same. Okay, so 1 half base times height. So half of 8 is 4, 4 times 10 is 40. Okay, so 64 plus 1, 2, 4 times 40. And that's going to give you, I think, 224 meters squared. Okay, so for the lateral surface area, you'll see that there's like technically no top right there. So you're just going to exclude, which means leave out the area of that base for the lateral surface area. So we're just going to leave out that square. So our lateral surface area would be 40 added 4 times. 4 groups of 40 which I think is 100, yeah, it is 160 meters squared, okay? For your summary, I want you to describe what a net is. If you need more room to write, continue it up there. Okay, surface area and lateral surface area, again, same situation as on the previous page. Just practice, practice finding those, okay? You should pause the video, try this on your own. The only thing I need to tell you that I forgot to give you this length right here. That's five inches. Okay, I think that's the only other typo I had. Okay, so anyway, surface area, I'm gonna draw the, kind of the, whoops, that's a really crazy circle. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, um, so this would be pi radius squared. This would be pi radius squared, 36 pi. This would be also 36 pi. I'll figure that out later, what exactly what that, is, or what that is rounded. And then right here, the height of it is 14. Right, the height, oh yeah, 14 feet. So this right here is really the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r. So it's 2 pi times the radius, 6, so it's really 12 pi. So the area of this right here is 14 times 12 pi. So 14 times 12, 168 pi. So 14 times 12 pi, and we get 168 pi. Okay, so I need to add all those together. 36 pi plus 36 pi plus 168 pi. Okay, see how they all have pi? It's kind of like, you know, when you're simplifying and you have the like terms. Technically, those are like like terms. So I can go 36 plus 36 plus 168, and I would get 240 times pi, okay? Now from there, I'm gonna go ahead and go 240 times pi. So 753.98 p squared. If one of them did not have that, then you can go 36 pi plus 36 pi plus whatever that is, okay? You, the only reason I was able to add this plus this plus this is because they all ended in the pi, like like terms, you know? Like if it was 5x plus 2x plus um, 3x, that would equal sub, or 10x, okay? Because they all have the same ending, okay? All right. Lateral surface area, you're going to exclude the two circles. So it's just really going to be this, 168 pi, which is approximately 527.79 feet squared. Okay, right here we have a cube. So I know it's going to look like six of the same thing, six squares. Okay, and it's a three by three. Add them all together, so it's nine. So it's really nine times six. It's 54 meters squared. Okay. Well, for the lateral surface area, you don't include this and don't include this. So basically, it's just going to be um, nine times four, or four times nine. It's four groups of nine. 
This could have been six groups of nine. Same thing, but I like going, this is, tells you how many groups of that it, of how many, um, six groups of nine. Okay. Okay, anyway, so that's 36 meters squared. Okay, last one right here. It's a triangular prism. So I'm going to draw its, you know, kind of net here. And then that one. So it is four inches tall. There, it should be a right triangle. Four, four, and then the base is three. Okay. So one half base times height. This is six. Okay, now the base right here is 3.5 by 3. Okay, 3.5 times 3 length times width is 10.5. Okay, and then we have this right here, 3.5 times 5. is 17.5 okay and then we have that side right there and that is what 4 by 3.5 and I think that's 14 so when you add those together I think you get 54 inches squared. Okay, now for the lateral surface area, you don't include the base. Okay, so it's everything but the 3.5 by 3. So not this. So I could take 54 minus 10.5, or I could just add all those together again. Okay. Your summary asks, what's the difference between surface area and lateral surface area? Number 12 says, Tim knows that a figure has a surface area of 40 centimeters squared. The net below has 5 centimeter and 2 centimeter edges. Could the net below represent the figure? Why? So I want to first draw your attention to these little, little tick marks right there. So you see um, how this one matches this one right over here? That just means they're going to be the same length. They're congruent to each other. So if the distance from here to here is two units, then right here to here is also two units. Okay? And one thing that I forgot to do when I created this is I forgot to label this um, on the picture. But I did label it up here. So two centimeters. And although it only says two right here, it's really two centimeters. So that's also two centimeters. And the reason I didn't label it on here is because I wanted to make sure to give you enough room. Okay? So anything that's got this one little tick mark like that, we're going to label it with two because that's going indi to indicate that that's two centimeters in length. Okay? So I'm just going to put little old twos wherever I see those tick marks, just on the outer part. So from there to there is two. Here, here's also two, here, here's also two, okay? So see how we've got those labeled. And you'll also see that there's another part of this problem where there's two tick marks, and those are gonna represent the five centimeter lengths. So when it's got the two tick marks like that, right, really like we see, that's five centimeters. So from here to here is also five centimeters because it matches this one, and here to here is five centimeters, and same with this, okay? So they're curious um, if this net represents um, the, a figure that has a 40 centimeter squared or 40 square centimeters as its surface area. So to figure out if this is matching that, if that's the one that is in question, we just have to figure out the surface area of that provided figure right there, okay? So what I'm going to do, um, since surface area tells us how many boxes there are, I'm just going to go ahead and find the areas of each little component of that net, okay? So I'm going to focus right here. So this it's a square, and its surface area would be 2 times 2. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, so that's 4 centimeters squared. And I'm not going to label it um, centimeters squared simply because there's just not enough room. So this is 4 centimeters squared. Um, right here, this rectangle, its dimensions are 5 centimeters by 2 centimeters, so its um, surface, I mean, so its area of this little section right here is 10 centimeters squared, 
And if this surface, or if this area, I'm sorry, is 10, this one is also 10. And this right here is also 10 because it's got the matching dimensions. And this right here is a 2 by 2, so its area is 4 units squared, I mean 4 centimeters squared. This one's 10 centimeters squared. So now that we have the um, each part of the net fig filled out, we can just find the surface area. And to find the surface area of this entire 3D shape, you know, it's supposed to be 3D once you fold it back together, we just need to add everything that we've come up with, okay? So I'm going to add this 10. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to add all the 10s first real quick. 10 and then another 10. Then 10 representing this guy. 10 representing this guy. And I have 4 and a 4. Okay, to make sure I didn't miss one, I'm going to count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Represents 6 faces, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so I'm going to be accurate there. And remember, these are all labeled centimeters squared. So 10, 20, 30, 40. 40 plus 8 is 48 centimeters squared, or I could say 48 square centimeters. Now, does this one match the one that um, Tim's talking about? No, because the one that Tim's... Um, thinking about is 40 centimeters squared or 40 square centimeters. This one's only 48 centimeters squared. So we need to answer the question, could the net below represent the figure? Why? So to answer that question, we would say no. The net represents a fi this net represents a figure that has a surface area of 48 centimeters squared. And the one that was in question was 40 centimeters squared, so that does not match, obviously. 13 says, how many more square inches of cardboard does a cube-shaped box with a side length of 8 inches have than a cube-shaped box with a side length of 4 inches? So when I see right here this word, how, how many more square inches is one than the other, I know I need to find the surface areas of both. I know it's surface area because a cube is three-dimensional, and you basically just have to find the surface area of each and tell me how much more is in the bigger one than the smaller one. For me, anyway, I need to make sure I draw kind of like a sketch. I need, I'm kind of a visual learner, so I need to kind of see a picture of this. So I know cubes, um, they have the same side length, so pretend this is a cube. And we know that all the side lengths are exactly the same. So I'm going to start this one out by labeling it 8 inches. Okay, so all the side lengths are 8 inches, okay? So from here to here also is 8 inches, from there to there, all 8 inches, okay? And then for the other one, it's saying it's 4 inches. So I'm just going to draw like kind of a smaller cube. It's half the side lengths of the other one. And now let's go ahead and find the surface areas of each one of them, okay? For me, I'm going to go ahead and just draw kind of a net. I know that there are six sides on a cube, so I'm just going to draw six squares. So this isn't really a net because they're not all connected, but each one represents... Um, one of the spaces on the cube, okay? So I know it's an 8 by 8, 8 inches by 8 inches. I'm not labeling inches right now, simply because I just don't have enough room. All right, so the um, area of this space right here, 8 times 8 is 64 inches squared, not labeling it, sorry. That's also 64. They're all 64 inches squared, okay? So when I go 64 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I would get that the surface area of this cube is equal to, let me see, 64 times 6, that is 384 inches squared, okay? I'm not done yet. I have to figure out the surface area of this cute little cube right there, all right? And I'm going to follow the same technique. I know there are six faces for this cube, and each of them 
have side lengths of four inches by four inches. So this isn't, you know, like I said, it's not really a net simply because they're not all connected. But I mean, it kind of looks like a net. So to figure out the uh, area of just this face right here, it's four times four, which is 16 units squared. And the units are inches, so it's 16 inches squared. Okay, so I see that there are six of them. So my surface area for this one is 16 times 6 and 16 multiplied by 6 is 90 96 inches squared we're not done because we obviously have to answer the question how many more square inches of cardboard does this one have than this one so that's implying you got to subtract okay guys and girls and 384 minus 96 is 288 inches squared so the larger cube has 288 square inches more than the smaller cube. And I want to go back up to the top part of this problem and just reread it to you. It says, how many more uh, square inches of cardboard does a cube-shaped box with side lengths of 8 inches have than a cube-shaped box with a side length of 4 inches? And at first, you're probably like, well, this one's just twice the size of it. So you would think that, hey, the bigger one is twice the size of the smaller one. But when I go 96 times 2, I don't get 384. You see, we get 192. So how the heck it, are, is this? So what is this relationship between these two? Well, since we're comparing their surface areas, yes, you it is double the size. So you're multiplying by 2. But since we're dealing with square units, you have to square this, okay? So now let's go ahead and re-examine this. You'll see 96 times two to the second power will give you 384. Two to the second power is four. So when I go 96 times four, I do get 384 inches squared. For your summary, I want you to answer this. Which problem was the most challenging for you? And what will you remember about that problem that will help you solve similar problems in the future? Please be thorough in your responses.